Happy Friday! Welcome back to Drinking by Myself. I'm setting myself a challenge. I have decided to read the oldest and the newest books on my TBR, which, as it currently stands, are the oldest book that I've had for the longest is this Persephone book of short stories. The newest one is currently this Proof of Trust, which I brought home from the office. That could change as the week goes on. I'm always getting new books. However, reading this chunky book of short stories doesn't seem like a good fit for this challenge. The book that I've had for the second longest is Always and Forever Lara Jean, which is book number three in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series, and I've wanted to read this one for years because I love those books and movies. So, here's what I'm going to do so that I'm not actually cheating. I am going to read a short story from this collection. Then, I'm going to read To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Then I'm going to read Trust or whatever newer, shinier thing I've replaced it with and then I will circle back to read another short story from this collection because this has been waiting on my shelf for so long I need to just get going with it. I'm going in. These stories go through in chronological order so it spans almost a hundred years of short stories by women. The first one is from 1909, it's called From A to Z by Susan Glassbell. I did not really understand this story. And I don't know if that's just the context, if I needed to be a woman from 1909 to get this. To me it seemed super depressing and super abrupt, and I think maybe that was the life of women. That the ending is that they don't get to choose their own lives and men tell them what to do. So that sucks. Didn't really get it, not sure I'll remember that beyond tonight. So with that slightly disappointing story behind me, it's time to read something much more fun always and forever, Lara Jean. It has been quite a few years now since I read the first two books in this series, so I don't really remember what happened. I always kind of had been planning to reread them before I read the third, but let's be honest, that's never gonna happen. So I'm just gonna have to dive in, hope I remember. All I know is she had got herself into a lot of scrapes. It was like more chaotic than the movies. I know the movies a lot better. I've seen them multiple times. I really, really like them. The books, I only read one each and there's like more complicated love triangles, love squares, love pentagons going on. So I'm probably gonna get confused. What I think has happened from just looking at the blurb here is she did, is this gonna be spoilers? There were three boys. Then I remember there were three boys in her life and it all got very chaotic. But I think at the end, book two she did settle for one of them. I'm not gonna say who it was in case you want to read this and also in case I'm wrong but now the complication is going to college and how to keep that relationship going. There are definitely parts of this that I have forgotten what happens because she keeps referencing little things that weren't in the films and I don't remember from however many years ago it was that I read these books. I think 2019 so we're going back in my memory quite a way. But what I do remember is that Lara Jean is adorable and these books are really fun and make me happy. So I'm bringing this with me. I'm going somewhere. Even more fun makes me even more happy right now. I'm going to meet my sister and she's taking me for my birthday present, which was to go to a cheese barge. We're going to sit on a barge and eat cheese. Nothing but cheese. Sophie Francis, Jessica Alton and Emmental Alton take the river. Remember when I had a sister? <laughs> What book are you reading? Eat more cheese. No. What book are you reading? Oh, I'm reading a really good book about a cannibal. It's oh, called. What's it called? No, <laughs> I've only got eat more cheese in my head. No, it's called. Um, it's called A Certain Hunger by a cannibal. Somebody. And it's yeah, it's really good. So it's basically it's about a cannibal, but it's like it's from her perspective, and she's she's like weirdly likable. Yeah, like I was saying, cool. you know, the one in, um, it's like Dan from Gossip Girl in You, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's like that. It's very good, I'm liking it. I mean, bloody hell. <laughs> I mean bloody, bloody hell. Bloody hell. It's the best food in my whole life. Yeah. Delicious. I like the eye contact, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I regret this. <laughs> It's the best toasty ever. The best it is. Toasty ever. It is the best toasty ever. Okay, back to the book's content. Raph and I are strolling down the road to Book Bar, which is a very drinking by my shelf friendly bookshop because they sell books and wine. We bought only red books. That's the rule of the day. Raph bought How to Read Now, which is a collection of essays by this woman. We both read her novel and we loved it. And also a lady who works at Book Bar said it was the best book she ever read. I got this one, Instructions for a Heat Wave. This is set here, like right around here in a heat wave, and now I'm going to read it right here in a heat wave. <laughs> okay, 
Here's the next thing we're doing before I get on with actually reading my book, which is what I'm supposed to be doing in this video. We're gonna try out the TikTok jalapeno and rose trend. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they have to infuse for a while. I add an extra slice in and left it for a few minutes. This is definitely getting spicy. Yeah, that tastes like jalapenos. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's got a kick. I think that's getting properly ooh. spicy. Huh. What we forgot to do is taste the rosé on its own so that we, we can't decide if this is an improvement or not because we don't know. But I'm a fan of this spicy thing. I've nearly read this whole book basically in one afternoon. Me and Raph are reading books with very different vibes. Yours is approaching a catastrophe. Mine is wholesome and she's baking cookies. And I finished it, and it was very, very cute. Good old Lara Jean. I don't read YA often at all, and I usually find it quite hard being inside the mindset of someone of that age, because it just feels so alien. But actually, there's something about this series, I just really enjoy it. It is quite fun going back and reliving, like, waiting for your uni acceptances, and bringing your boyfriend home and like having to negotiate with your parents whether they're allowed in your room or not and also because they're American not drinking. Lara Jean is a particularly like innocent character. She just prefers making cakes and staying home and she's very cute and very different from me. I'm glad I picked this one back up. So first phase of the experiment was reading the book I've had for the longest and the conclusion is I probably should have read this sooner. Probably should have read it closer to the other two so that I actually remembered more about what was going on. It's me again. I just read the acknowledgements of this book and I think, I hadn't realised this, so I think that this series was originally a duology that finished with P.S. I Still Love You and then she then decided to write a third book rather than it was always supposed to be a series. That's very interesting and I don't think I had realised that. What happened at the end of P.S. I Still Love You? Was it like pretty finished at that point? That's probably enough reading for tonight. I'm going to make dinner, then we're going to watch Persuasion, the new Netflix movie. And then it's time to get started on the newest book on my TBR, which is Trust. Still. Oh no, it's not. I bought a book today. You just saw that happen. That changes everything. Persuasion was great. We really enjoyed it. I have strong opinions on why I think all the backlash against it is stupid. <laughs> and I'll save that for another video. Now it's time to dive into this one. So this is very much now the newest book on my TBR. And I'm reading it right where it's set. And even though it is... 10 at night, it is still bloody hot, which is appropriate for a book with heat wave in the title. I'm only a few pages in, but I can already tell I'm gonna love this book. But also, so the book is set in 1976 when there was that legendary heat wave. There were like months of drought, I think, and about 15 days where the temperature was above 32, which, you know, kind of pales into insignificance now. We've had days of it going up to 40, and it's not just in the UK. It's pretty terrifying what's going on right now. But anyway, this is Frinsbury Park, which is basically where the novel is set. And I imagine that it looked roughly the same back then as it does now. Here's my instructions for a heat wave. Don't get on the tube. Just don't do it, ever. My next instructions for a heat wave, the second you get home from work, when the temperature is finally cooled down enough, sit outside and read. I'm also gonna add some instructions. Pour yourself a glass of wine and create yourself a snack board. I haven't really told you what this book is about beyond being set in a heatwave. I'm really enjoying it so far. A little bit of context on me picking this one up in the first place. I've only read one Maggie O'Farrell book before and that was Hamlet, which is her most recent one. Um, and was like critically acclaimed and prize winning and I hated it. <laughs> I really, really did not get on with that book. It was not for me. So I was kind of wary. But having read the first just under 100 pages of this, I can tell you it is nothing like that. It's totally different. And I'm really, really enjoying it so far. So the story is about a woman whose husband one morning sets off to go to the shop, just like he always does, and then never comes 
that's all we really know about that story so far. She's called her various children to tell them what's going on and she's a very funny character. She's quite scatty and like doesn't get to the important information on the phone so it takes them a long while to realise that something actually major has happened because she keeps talking about the shed key. So she's a very funny character. Mostly so far in the 100 pages-ish that I've read we've actually been getting the backstory of the various children. She's got three children and we've been learning a little bit about where their lives have taken them so far building them up to this day. So it is not centered around being a like mystery thriller, what happened to her husband. It's gonna be more of a uh, deep dive into this family and the dynamics between them. Just my kind of thing. Also though, I am intrigued, where did her husband go? I've come inside to be closer to the wine. Also, thank God, touch wood so far the august uk heat wave is not as bad as the july august heat wave in which the temperature did not drop below 30 like throughout the night luckily the august one is so far less severe because it is now firmly in the mid to low 20s at 7 30 which is acceptable for coming inside. Not gonna lie, it still does feel a little too warm in here. Also, my weather app tells me terrible things are coming. So it's lucky that I'm currently getting some instructions for a heat wave. So far, the instructions seem to be, make your husband go missing? One of the most interesting characters in this book is the younger sister who can't read. So she is obviously dyslexic and this was never like noticed or diagnosed, um, so she never got help with it and so she has grown into adulthood without ever having learned to read and no one has noticed she manages to hide this from everyone so she has a job as an assistant and her partner doesn't know and she is constantly like daily finding ways to hide the fact that she can't read and no one really suspects it because they're from this like middle class educated family She's a very interesting character. Temperatures are seriously hotting up in London. I mean, it is not even 9am and I'm melting. Why am I wearing long sleeves? And temperatures are seriously hotting up in the plot of my book. I had a very busy day at work. I did not update you until right now when it is past nine at night. Uh, I just finished this book. It was amazing. It ended very, very abruptly. I'm not sure what to think of that, but I really loved this book. So if I had to pit the two against each other, it'd be easy. I loved this one more. Is the moral of the story that I should read the books I've just bought and just like get rid of a lot of the books on my backlist? Maybe. What I will tell you is that I haven't yet finished this experiment because I did say I was going to read one more of the Persephone short stories. It's only 10 pages. I should read it now. The next one is from Catherine Mansfield, who is a very famous author. It's written like a play. So I think this story is about a woman trying to have an affair and failing. I just think that maybe reading short stories written in a totally different time period doesn't work that well because the short stories like i have read classic books about women living lives that are totally different from mine and way more oppressed than mine and i can like get really into it but when it's a short story i think it's harder because you only have 10 pages to try and understand their whole context and i think it's too difficult that is not a fault of the story at all that is entirely a fault of me I just can't put myself in their position when it's like, wow, they're not allowed to do anything. The moral of that story, I think, is don't keep books for too long, read the books that you buy, and subscribe to this channel. Those are the three morals of this story. I can't help you with the first two, but subscribing, click the link below. See ya.